Hello and welcome back to my newest SQL Server Quickie. Hands up, who of you use stamp tables and who of you use stable variables? During my various consulting engagements, I very often see that people tend to use stamp tables every time or table variables every time. But as you will see throughout this Quickie, when we compare the performance impact they have a completely different use case in SQL Server. Let's switch now over to my magical flip chart so that I can explain why we need damp tables and why we also need table variables in SQL Server. I want to show you now on the flip chart why damp tables introduce recompilations. Imagine we have a simple stored procedure and within that stored procedure we create in the first step a damp table. SQL Server always has to recompile a stored procedure when you change your database schema, for example when you add an index or when you create a table. As you can see with the creation of a damp table in DampDB, we change our database schema and therefore we need here our first we compilation. In the next step, we insert records into that damp table by performing an insert statement. Finally, when, you when we select from that damp table, SQL Server has to update our statistics because we have inserted rows. When SQL Server has updated your statistics, SQL Server also has to make sure that the new data distribution reflects in your execution plan and therefore the second or the select statement triggers our second recompilation for that very simple stored procedure. Just imagine that with a very, very simple stored procedure in combination with damp tables, that stored procedure needs to recompilations. And therefore, we have table variables in SQL Server. When you declare a table variable, you don't change your schema. Means the first recompilation doesn't need to happen when you declare a table variable. You're not changing in any way your database schema, you're just declaring a variable. But the variable is still persisted in DampDB. That's also very important. Then you insert records into your table variable and finally you retrieve those records from your table variable with a simple select statement. How can we overcome the second recompilation? Very easy. Table variables have no statistics, means SQL Server doesn't maintain those non-existing statistics and therefore we don't have the second recompilation. Very, very simple. But with serious side effects. The query optimizer has no idea about our data distribution and just hard-coded guesses one row. Means that affects the quality of your execution plans. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I want to show you the pros and cons about DAP tables and table variables in SQL Server. In this demonstration, I want to show you how damp tables and table variables behave within a stored procedure regarding the need for recompilations. In the first step, I have already set up a very simple SQL Server profiler trace that captures recompilations at the instance level. In the next step, I create a very simple stored procedure. I create here a damp table, then I insert 1000 rows and finally I select from the table. It's a very simple stored procedure like ones that you write almost every day in your life. But it has a serious performance side effect. When we now execute this stored procedure, it triggers two recompilations during the runtime. The first recompilation is needed because of the schema change. When you create a damp table, you change your database schema and therefore SQL Server has to recompile your stored procedure. And the second recompile is needed because after the insertion of the rows, SQL Server had to update your statistics. A very simple, straightforward stored procedure triggers two recompilations. So, then what are the positive things about damp tables? 
they have statistics and therefore the query optimizer can estimate very accurately how many rows are returned and based on that information it can generate a well-performing execution plan for you. This is very important. Let's have a look now at the second implementation of this stored procedure. This time I have used table variables instead of damp tables. When we execute this stored procedure, there will be no recompilations during runtime. A table variable is just a variable, but it still persisted in DAPTB. Since it is a variable, that means that you don't change your database schema. Therefore, the first recompilation which happened in the previous situation will not happen now anymore. And in addition, a table variable doesn't have any statistics, thus overcoming the problem of the second recompilation. Very easy. But the real problem is now that the query optimizer can no longer estimate the row count because of the lack of statistics. Therefore, the query optimizer just hard-coded guesses one row, but the reality can of course be quite different. As you can see from this SQL Server Quickie, damp tables and variable variables have quite different use cases in SQL Server. A damp table makes sense when you deal with a large amount of data. Of course, you introduce recompilations, but these recompilations give you accurate statistics and better performing execution plans. So overall, your query should be faster. And on the other hand, Table variables should be only used with a small data set. With a small data set, it doesn't really matter if you estimate one row and then in reality return a few rows. The estimation is always wrong, but on the other hand, you don't introduce recompilations. I hope that I have given you with this SQL Server Quickie an idea about the pros and cons of damp tables and table variables. As always in SQL Server, it just depends on your data and on your workload. Thanks for your time and I'm already looking forward to welcoming you again next month. Thank you.